Hello everybody, welcome to What Culture Gaming. I'm Scott and I've been playing a stupid amount of Gigantic. Now although the game looks like Overwatch blended with Paladins or whatever, some sort of other hero based shooter, there's actually a hell of a lot more to Gigantic's gameplay than you might think. Now it's not just about picking random heroes and jumping in hoping for the best. To get the most out of Gigantic you need to think about team tactics and different powers and buffs and status ailments and factor all of those things in together. It's all about working together, it's all about playing to your strengths, it's knowing when to attack and when to defend and basically I didn't get any of this for a good few matches so I thought I'd share some really cool tips with you. Here are 10 early tips to get the most out of Gigantic. So number 10, I would recommend picking a heavy melee fighter or a shooter based character first. Now Gigantic's roster is humongous and the sheer variety of characters and different abilities that they have can be overwhelming. On the melee side of things, I would recommend Lord Nossus or Margrave just for getting started. Um, they're quite slow moving but they do hit hard so if you want to hang back and focus on defense, pounding characters as they come through to take out your guardian, feel free to use them. Margrave has some really cool charging abilities which means that even if the enemy groups up, you can just steamroll right through. On the other side of that coin are shooter based characters like Beckett with her twin pistols and HK206 the robot droid totally not Bastion but kind of looks a little bit like him. That guy. Either way you're going to want to build up to the more hybridized characters. If you take a look at the heroes page and scroll through and look at their abilities there are various characters that aren't just attributed to one particular class and just getting your head around the way Gigantic plays I'd sort of recommend just picking someone that is just lets you jump in and just start getting some kills. Number nine use the map and for the love of card stick together. Now the way that Gigantic plays it isn't like a sort of you know lone gunman kind of shooter. You can't run ahead and try and take everybody on you'll just get thwomped. You need to use the map to keep track of where your various teammates are and where they're going to be if they're next to any nodes on the map and if they're going to be triggering any creatures that might provide some sort of buff or health restorative ability or something that you can you guys can pile in and use together. For example Taito the Swift, the weird owl ninja man and Trip, the lightning fast assassin, pairing those guys together they have devastating melee abilities especially Taito's whirlwind spin which if you combine them and then just wade in you can take out a whole platoon of the enemy soldiers in one go. Number eight, understand that matches have momentum. You kind of can't really just charge ahead. The enemy guardian will just destroy you in one fell swoop or chances are you'll end up walking right into territory where the enemy players are all spawning together. You need to take time, you need to focus on defense. Outside of using text chat or voice chat to make sure everybody's on the same page, wait for these times before you rush ahead or you'll just be wiped out. Number seven, remember that defense is very important and your character will get stronger as the match progresses. Brilliantly, Gigantic does actually suggest in the bottom left hand side which of your abilities you should be upgrading. Each one of Gigantic's characters does come with two tiers of skill unlocks and the game itself will suggest which of your abilities you should unlock. It's best to take time in between deaths when you're back on that weird ship launch pad thing to just bring up your skill tree and see where you want to go. Various melee abilities can be buffed with status ailments such as burn damage and projectiles can be given wider damage radiuses. Either way, you want to take the time to analyze where your character is, think about your approach. Think about how much you want to hang back and when to strike. Gigantic does not benefit characters that jump way ahead and get stuck in. Take your time and then strike. Number six, use the hero menu on the main menu to get a feel for which kind of characters you want to gravitate towards. Just down to how many there are and the little snippets of lore that you get behind them, different ones are going to gravitate to different players. You've got shooters, you've got melee focused ones, you've kind of got some mages that are very cast heavy. You're going to want to take time to get a feel for how you're then going to approach a battle. Gigantic kind of gives off this Overwatch style feel of like I'm just going to grab someone and figure it out as I go but a little bit of time spent in the character menu can kind of benefit you in the long run. Number five, running away is a viable tactic. If you feel yourself getting overwhelmed, if there's far too many enemies bearing down on you, it's totally okay to just turn tail and run the hell away. Go back to your home base, go back and heal, get next to some of the creatures that you've spawned, get your health bar back up and then regroup, renew and come back together as one. Number four, find some friends to play with. Being the game is free to play, just grab anybody. Just grab some people to play with because you need voice chat and you need people who are gonna to respond to the text chat options in the game. Gigantic totally thrives on teamwork. You need everybody to be bringing together their various attacks, status buffs, different defensive capabilities all at once. You all need to push together once and you all need to defend at the same time. It's not gonna work unless you can work as a team. Everyone knows that establishing teamwork with a whole bunch of randoms is kinda of nigh on impossible. So just get a whole bunch of your friends together and work together. Number three, analyze your character's abilities in between respawns. Now I know I touched on this before but chances are you'll rush into your whole bunch of gigantic games just flailing, wailing and pulling off different attacks and not really getting a feel for how you're supposed to be approaching combat. In between respawns bring up your skill tree, have a look at the text, see what you can actually do. Take in these different approaches to combat. Does your character actually benefit rushing in at a certain time? Maybe they have some sort of airborne skill that they can use. Maybe they need to hold back the whole game and fire from afar. Maybe changing one of the skills that you have benefits one of these playstyles and you can then start playing towards that. 
Number two, pay attention to your focus. I can't count the amount of times that I just haven't even realized I had focus to use at the bottom of the screen. It's the little bar that will fill up based on how many kills you get and how many different nodes you put down and different creatures that you summon. This is the thing that governs your character's own, essentially their ultimate, their one main ability. And it's the kind of thing that can be funneled back into the creatures that are already on the nodes to make them even more powerful. No matter what number this thing's on, you can feed it back into all the creatures around you to make them stronger. Just be aware of it. It's the kind of thing you want to bust out when the enemy guardian is weak, but if you happen to have some focus left over and you're waiting for the next rampage, journey to one of your nodes and build them up. Now, number one, play your class. It's the most age-old PC adage whole thing in the world. Pick someone and stick to their strengths. If you're good at melee, wade in, hit, stick and move. If you're gonna hang back, fire some shots off. If you're a mage, buff the guys around you. You need to play to your strengths and you need to buff your teammates. Gigantic works best when everyone plays to their own strengths and when they all come together and move as one. So overall, you really just need to think about the way Gigantic plays. Don't wait in too much, play to defense, play to your class, understand what your teammates can bring to the game. There's no duplicate heroes, so see what you can do that no one else can. As soon as you start getting your head around that, that's when Gigantic will click, and that's when you'll start getting the most out of it. So there are all the tips and tricks that I picked up from my first few games with Gigantic. The game has been out for a while, so let me know in the comments if there's anything that you found that I haven't covered. Also, let me know if you're going to be picking it up, and what you think of the general style overall. I've been Scott from OurCulture.com, and I'll catch you guys soon.